Hey everyone, it's Mark Ferguson with Invest For More. Welcome to another real estate video. Uh, today we're doing another complete fix and flip before and after video. I like doing these. It kind of shows the house when we first bought it, during the remodel, after we fix it up. I go over all the numbers in the end, what we made, don't leave out anything like the house flipping shows like to, and talk about some of the things that went wrong, went right during the entire process. This was a house we bought from auction.com, had occupants in it. I could not see the house when I bought it, so it was exciting getting in there for the first time. And then um, have not bought a house from auction.com ever, so this was my first one, even though we've done 170 some flips, never bought one from auction.com. Other people always tend to bid higher than me, and I was really surprised to get this one. And I even got a video of when I was the winning bidder on the auction, so we'll show that as well. So we'll have all kinds of great information on this property. It was also a really cool four level with a unique floor plan, and in addition, so that was neat to see too. And then um, someone in my office actually bought it, so we didn't have to list it, so I go over that process too. All right, make sure you check out investformore.com for all the information on my flips, rentals, being an agent. Uh, the Fix and Flip scoreboard has over 70 properties listed on it with before and after videos and numbers, so check that out. And we will get started right now showing you when I got the auction and won the bid. 43 seconds left, 40 seconds. What? Yes, I was Are you recording it? <laughs> See? <laughs> That's okay, I didn't say anything the whole time. I just wanted to show it if somebody bids at the last second. Oh, now it's like going green with each second. I pulled up on my screen too. Oh, I can't imagine someone doesn't bid at the very end, but we'll see. You'd think they would have bid by now. But... Yes, you'd think they would have bid by now. I feel like they extend it if someone bids at the very end, so it doesn't matter. Hmm. Did I get it? I think you're the chicken winner. Oh, I can't believe it. I, oh my gosh. I can't believe we got that one. I thought for sure it'd go for like 280. That's good though. Yeah, I think it'll be a good one. Well, we won the auction. That's my first time I ever won an auction on auction.com, I think. Is it? Yeah. That's cool. I've listed them on there before, but never actually bought one. Hmm. All right. Well, that's a house that's occupied. We've never seen inside before, and we just won the bid on. <laughs> okay, you can see we won the bid. Uh, we got the house, but it's occupied. So we don't know who's living there, if they're renter, owner, but the house looks decent from the outside. So now we had to figure out how to get the people out of the home. And we, how we do that is usually cash for keys. So we have to go talk to the person, offer them a certain amount of money to move out by a certain date, and hope they respond to us. And we don't have to go through an eviction because that can take one to two months, cost a couple thousand dollars, and then you don't know what kind of shape the property's going to be left in. So this was us first going to see the person to hopefully get a cash for keys done. Sitting outside the house I bought at auction.com, had some hard times getting a hold of the occupant. But we did finally talk to her, and I'm here now to see the house for the first time. Won't be videotaping that. It might be a little awkward with her there. But um, do have a cash for keys agreement in my lap. So hopefully get that filled out. Uh, get moving on this house, and we'll see what it looks like, because I've never seen the inside of it. Hopefully it is nice. And I'm standing outside the auction.com house that we bought about two months ago or so. So we bought it sight unseen, never got inside of it, paid 267000 for it, and then ended up talking to the occupants, they're the previous owners, had a cash for keys deal with them, and then they just moved out today and we took possession today of it. So we'll walk through the property, show you everything. It's kind of a neat house, but a little outdated, and go through some of the numbers too. So make sure you check out investformore.com, of course, for more information on our flips, investformore.com backslash flips, has a list of all our properties that we've got going on. All right, so like I said, this one was on auction.com, and I had kind of a short video when I got it. I was not expecting to get this house when I bid on it. <laughs> I, um, the bid starts really low on auction.com, like 200,000 or something like that. We knew the reserve would be higher, and I think I bid, I was gonna bid up to like 255, and oh, Three or four hours before the auction was up, someone else bid 265 or something. Like, I'll just bid one more time, 267, I should be fine. Expecting someone to bid 
higher right away. In the next four hours, nobody else bid and we got it. So really rare to see that. Usually in those auctions, someone's bidding late. Um, the price gets bid up quite a bit late in the auction, but that did not happen on this one. So as you can see, this is an addition. So this is put on, I'm not sure when, but after the house was built, kind of a cool little room, but you can see the skylights were leaking and supposedly the roof has been fixed since then, but obviously I have some drywall work, some work to do there, but tons of windows. These are real hardwood floors, really tall ceilings. So I, I really like these old four levels and it's actually really similar to the, the first house I ever bought. But um, this room kind of adds even more to that. So you can see it's got the living room, kitchen, and nook over there. And usually these houses have a nook over there by the family room, the kitchen, and then like a formal dining room right here. And I bet this house might have actually had that at one time, but when they did this big remodel for the addition, they probably redid this whole kitchen. And it's oak, which is not my favorite, but it's a lot of cabinets and they're actually really custom, fancy pull-out drawers everywhere. Um, they're in pre pretty decent shape. So I think we're gonna leave the cabinets, see if we can just replace the counters and we should be fine. We'll replace the appliances. It's got double ovens, but they're obviously pretty old. Cooktop there. The fridge, we'll, we'll have to see what we can do with the fridge. That's a sub-zero with the wood panels, so that's pretty old, but they can last forever. We'll just have to see about cost and what it takes to do that. Um, the dishwasher, you can get a new one of those, although that looks fairly new. And just put the panel back on it if you want, we'll see. So we'll at least keep these cabinets, since it's so huge, it'd be really expensive and probably wouldn't add a whole lot of value. There's been, for comps that have sold in this area, a lot of them have had these older kitchens and still sold just fine. So what we're planning is paint, flooring, probably some bathroom work, um, obviously fixing the addition roof. Um, Fixtures like probably door handles things like that. We'll do we'll do and then The ARV on this is probably from 360 to 390 in that range and we couldn't really Pull the exact ARV until we got into it and saw what it's like but um stuff has been selling pretty decent over here and it's kind of a neat area. So that bathroom isn't bad, but again, tub's kind of outdated. And this is actually, I think, the exact floor plan of the first house I bought when I was like, what, 22 or 23. Lived there seven years, fixed it up a little bit, made absolutely no money on it because I bought it in 2003 and sold in 2009. But that was before I knew what I was doing with buying good deals. So I bought that at the top of the market, but it had the three bedrooms up. The closets were in the exact same spot, almost identical. And the funny thing too, this is the master. Here is my house when I bought it, had a mirrored wall right there too, except I had the sweet gold leaf, individual like foot by foot mirrors. So it was a little more custom than this one. It was pretty amazing, but there you go. And then there's gonna be a three-quarter bath back here, which mine had too. So again, just the surround on there, not super fancy. We'll see what the budget says and how much we can and can't do. We'd like to make it nice, but you don't have to go crazy nice as that adds so much to the cost. And uh, this is actually a little bigger closet than my house had. My house wasn't quite as big as this one. So cost to repair this thing is gonna be a little tricky to calculate. It's so big, there's so much going on with it. Um, probably in the $30,000 range, just because there's so much carpet, so much paint, 
will be doing bathroom work. Might have to have, you know, some fixtures, things like that. So there may be some HVAC work. You just never know what's gonna pop up. Here's kind of where the washer and dryer go. And then there's another half bath right here. And the garage is right here. And then, um, so we'll have those repairs. We'll also have carrying costs of selling for close to 400,000. All your costs will be higher because we'll have to pay another real estate agent who most likely has the buyer. We'll have financing costs. We'll have carrying costs, property taxes, insurance, all of that stuff as well. So we'll probably be in the 20 to $25,000 range for all of those costs. The basement is here. And of course, we've had two houses like this. The house we bought a couple months ago that had a really weird floor plan, it had their egress window downstairs in the family room, and then they had a bedroom right next to it with the tiny regular window. And this one has the same thing here too, which is not really a bedroom, but kind of an office thing, but it could be used as a bedroom. And it's got the tiny window. So again, we'll see how far we wanna go, but there might be the possibility of moving the bedroom here so it actually has the nice egress window. And it's a good sized basement. In here, this utility room, there is no bathroom down here. So comparing it to my house, once again, I had four bedrooms, four bathrooms. I had a bathroom kind of right in this spot right here. But still, I don't think the cost is worth it to add a bathroom. Don't think we'll need it, but we'll figure all that out here pretty soon really things could have gone you know much worse buying a house side unseen especially one this big but I had an idea just based on the exterior being pretty nice it had sold a couple years ago so we had pictures from the MLS before and oops those pictures were all pretty nice so we we're hoping it hadn't been destroyed and it had not and this is a huge selling point as well. There'll need, need to be some cleanup back here, but it's got a giant yard. There's the addition. Have to watch where I'm walking because they had some rather large dogs. And the best part of this house, of course, is the hot tub. Yep, there you go, beauty. <laughs> so uh, the last time we had a hot tub in a house, we put it on Craigslist for free and it disappeared pretty quick. We will probably do that again here. All right, so that's the property at one of my rehabs we're working on right now, our house flips. I'm gonna give you a quick update and show you what it looks like inside. We've got our plumber here, our other contractor. People always ask me to show videos of them actually working. They hate that. The last thing they want is me videotaping them actually working or being on the video at all but um they'll probably be hiding so we'll see if they're around or not but this one we bought at auction.com and pretty easy rehab but we've got it mostly demoed out and then starting to put stuff back together as well so you can see a list of all our flips with videos at investformore.com backslash uh, flips and you can see those all there and then have much more information on the site and on Facebook, Instagram, all that good stuff. All right, so this is kind of a cool house. Like I said, bought it, we bought it side and scene, so we didn't see the inside before we bought it. And it wasn't in too bad a shape, which I kind of hoped because it had been for sale a couple of years earlier. It wasn't too bad. Uh, some things we did, obviously, took out the carpet. There was popcorn here, so we got rid of the popcorn. It was really easy to get off. It hadn't been painted yet, which was awesome. And this is an addition and get to that soon. Redrywalling, sheet rocking. That was from a roof leak. They had some water damage and tore it out. And then the kitchen, it's right here. 
We bought this for 267,000, thinking 30,000 in work, and it'll be around a three, three, oh, 360, 360,000 in there. So should be a decent one. These cabinets, super custom. You can see that I did a before video that I'll link to, but really nice cabinets. So even though they're oak, not my favorite, we're just gonna replace the countertops with granite, replace the backsplash, we will replace the stoves. This one, we came here last week and the stove had turned itself on and was going full blast. We could not turn it off. None of the controls worked. So I turned the breaker off and got it to turn off, but that's just another reminder why it's good to check your properties once in a while. So our contractor was sick that week and hadn't been in. So nice to see we caught that. We are gonna try and leave the fridge just because it would be so expensive to try and replace that. And um, we will be replacing the dishwasher since you can see a mouse decided to make a nest out of the insulation. It's pretty nasty and disgusting. We'll leave the windows. Have the carpet out down there. And then upstairs. We did have that bathroom gutted and the tub going in carpet is out second bedroom here and then the master here I'll go through this a little quick because I already did the one video where you can see more of it and this one we got it as well, but we've got kind of the shower surround already in. It probably saves us a thousand dollars to do a shower surround like that instead of doing individual tiles and laying the tile and grouting it and cutting it just in labor costs. So we've kind of been looking at ways to decrease our costs on these because it's just a constant struggle. And that's one thing we can do. And it still looks just fine. Like that's not gonna cost someone not to buy the house. And it's kind of a little bit of an upgraded surround, not super cheap. So one way we can save money. All right. Obviously we'll paint everything, have new carpet. And I think we talked about possibly extending the hardwood in this living room. But I don't think we've decided for sure yet if we're gonna do that. The lower level, probably just leave that the same. Maybe paint them, I think just leave them. Do carpet down here. And then this is the laundry room. This little half bath. Oh, I just wanna, Mickey's pet peeves is when they leave the toilet lit up. <laughs> oh, light doesn't work. But we'll probably just leave that bathroom the way it is. Don't need to redo it if it's in decent shape. And the basement. Got the carpet out here. We'll just paint down here. And we have this extra room right here which had counters, it was kind of a craft room before. We took those out. It's more valuable as a bedroom. So we did that, has a closet, and then you've got your little utility room right here, which nothing exciting there has happened. And I'll show you outside real fast because we're doing some stuff out there. It took me like five minutes to figure out how to lock this stupid door. I kept trying to push the latch whichever way I could. And the way you lock it is you simply don't touch the latch, you just close it and it automatically locks. So <laughs> good to figure that out. Uh, we have some rotten wood on this deck and the hot tub we're getting rid of. So we have some of our other contractors who do framing drywall. You can see kind of right here, the rotten pieces. They're gonna replace most of it add some stairs right there so you don't have this giant drop some railings where we need it 
I think they're charging us $1,200 to do all that. They're super cheap. I love them. I'm so glad we found them. And we like to use a mix of contractors, subs, to get all this done. And they'll, they're going to redo those stairs over there as well and replace some of the rotten wood on that too. All right, so that's the house. We're moving along. Actually selling this to Carrie in my office. So she's an agent, um, helps with the front desk as well. And she's been looking for a house for a while and just love this house. And I really like this house too. It's actually really close to the first house I ever bought. It was a four level with almost the same floor plan, slightly different. But what we ended up doing was painting everything. And if you look at the before video, which I'll link to, this was carpet in the living room. So we added the hardwood. There's already hardwood in the entry and the kitchen, but our hardwood guy's able to blend it in. Looks really good, can't even tell. And matched it with that hardwood over there too. So well, this over here is an addition. And it's kind of cool with the brick wall, the skylights. We had to repra replace the roof on this one and those skylights were leaking so you can see the drywall damage in the before video. But got that all fixed up. The big wall of windows is pretty cool. And it has a great kitchen too that was added at some point. And as you can see, we did not replace the cabinets. They're oak cabinets, not my favorite, but they're in decent shape. And they're really custom. They have kind of the pull-out drawers, you know, all the fancy stuff. So we left those, put on the granite counters, and replaced the appliances, and that was about it. So those are very expensive. <laughs> Get um, those stoves. You know, it's not a double oven together, but two actual ovens. And because of the size, they're not in there. We need to have our guy fix that up a little bit. Um, they're very pricey. I think they're like $900 each or something. And that was the cheapest we could find. Put in the new flat top there. The dishwasher we replaced. Uh, so spent a decent amount of money on the kitchen. But we saved the cabinets, with, which saved us a lot as well. Um, new flooring, of course. Kept most of the doors, but touched up the trim and stain a little bit. Now, when I bought it, it was occupied by the previous owner. So it's auction.com. Went through, through foreclosure. Uh, one of the first REOs I've bought in a while, foreclosures. And so I could not see what it looked like when I bought it. So I was hoping it's in decent shape. And based off of the previous MLS that sold a couple years ago, it looked to be decent. Based off the outside, it was pretty well taken care of. I kind of took a chance. And honestly, I did not think I was going to get this property at 267 I bid that much uh, with four hours left in the auction, just assuming someone would bid higher. Because I always get beat out on auction.com houses. But for whatever reason, nobody bid higher and we got it. But worked out okay. Uh, something that would drive me crazy if I lived in this house and we didn't have to fix was there's no lights in the bedrooms or the living room. It's all, it's got a switch for your lamp to plug into the outlet, but no actual light. So I think, you know, that would drive me crazy living here, but we didn't have to do that here to get it sold. Here's the master, no light in here either. Like I said, this floor plan is almost exactly the same as my first house I bought, but I had a wall closet and this has a walk-in closet. That's like the only huge difference. And then here's the other bathroom we, we redid. So new vanity, new flooring. We put in the shower surrounds and the tub surround. So much cheaper than doing tile and so much faster. So we started doing that more. They don't look that bad. They're easier to clean. You know, it's a style that most people, just the white, won't complain about. So we've been doing that quite a bit lately just because it saves us a bunch of money. All right, we will keep going.
So like in the house I first bought to, it had this nook here, and then it had your kitchen, then it had another dining room over there, like before the kitchen ended. So I'm guessing that's kind of what this had too originally, but don't know for sure. And here's the family room down here. Did not do a whole lot here either. Touched up the trim. Didn't do anything with the fireplace. Just kind of carpet and paint. And here's your little laundry area. And then you've got, oh, the light got turned off. Little half bath. Didn't do anything in there either. It looked just like that. So that's one thing I preach about a lot when doing these flips. The trick is not doing everything and making them perfect. The trick is doing enough to get them sold without spending too much money and, you know, not making any money. We still have a couple toilets we need to take out, but that's the garage. And we still have the basement to go to. Right down here. So this had kind of a crazy paint job. We just painted over it, went neutral, nothing fancy. And then this room down here was kind of a work room. It had some counters in it and we took those out. So Carrie is going to use it for a bedroom and did not want those in there. So we did that. Probably would have done the same thing if we were going to list it as well. For this house, we, it's so hard to value it. I mean, I think we could probably get more than three fifty-five dollars listing it on the market. In fact, I'm pretty sure because it's a cool house. And we'll show you the backyard here too, which is really nice. The problem is the comps don't support a higher value than that for the neighborhood. So even if we got a higher offer... I don't think it would appraise. I think it would kind of get stuck in there. Maybe a little higher, but by selling it to carry, we don't have to list it, don't have to market it. It's actually gonna sell here in a couple weeks, so that saves us money and time. And then uh, she can get you know, a pretty good deal, doesn't have to compete with anybody, and get a pretty cool house. So it's almost a third of an acre lot. Cleaned up a bunch of it back here. And then this pergola deck area was here before, but we redid the top. And I know sometimes I complain about my contractors and different things they do. So this time, I had no idea that our bid included the top part here. I thought we were just redoing the deck, patching the rotten holes. There's a hot tub right there we got rid of, patching the deck. But I surprised pleasantly when we show up and we have this cool pergola. So that was really cool. Um, Nice to see that. And then we touched up some of the stuff over here. We did that deck over there with new railings. Still have a couple of chunks of wood to get out of here. So, Okay, here are the numbers on this flip that we bought from auction.com. And I'll try and go through all of them. Once in a while, I leave out something and remember it after I did the video. But usually, I try and get pretty close. Um, bought it for 267000 there was no buyer's fee. So people keep asking me this. How much was the buyer's fee? For whatever reason, on this auction.com property, they had no buyer's premium, no fee, nothing at all. On other auction properties, they do. So it's, I don't know how they decide that, but on some they do, some they don't. They also offered title insurance on this property. So I got free and clear title. It wasn't a quick claim deed. It, I was completely protected. Well, as you think you're completely protected with title insurance, but I have another story where that's not always the case. Anyway, um, so it was a very simple, easy auction.com process, but they're not all the same. So always make sure you're checking out what kind of auction it is. Now, I used a local bank to finance this one, which saved me a lot of money on financing costs compared to a lot of the other complete fix and flip videos you may have seen. So my loan amount was only $200,000 though, because my local bank only finances 75% of the purchase price and none of the repairs, but their interest rate is much lower. All their other costs are lower. So I have to bring, you know, 66, almost $67,000 just for the down payment. And I'm paying for the repairs, all the other stuff out of pocket too. So, you know, I had $100,000, my own cash into this deal by the time we sold it. 
but I paid a lot less in cost. So I have another video that goes over that, that I'll link to on the cost between hard money, private money, local banks, the differences in how much more you have to bring, the interest rates, all of that stuff. Um, really good video. All right, so sold it for 355,000 um, to someone in my office, which I said was very nice. Didn't have to market it or list it for very long. Uh, sold right away. Maybe probably could have gotten a little bit more, but the problem with this neighborhood was the comps were very low for what the houses were. It's weird. So we might have had appraisal issues, hard to say, but um, I think it worked out great the way we did it. All right, financing with a local bank. Loan amount, 200000 250 that's 75% of the purchase price. The origination fee was about $2,000. Interest I paid was thirty six seventy one, which is four months at $918. I think their rate was 5.5% on this loan, where if I'm using private money or hard money, I'm paying 9 to 11%. So more than double the interest costs, I'd have at least double the origination fee. And then also, I'm usually financing 100% with private or hard money. So I'd have much higher costs because my loan amount would be higher. So definitely saved a lot of money. And they always have some other fees, loan, um, sorry, doc prep fees, flood certificate fees, those kinds of things. So a little over $6,000 in financing costs. Hard money, private money be at least twice that, if not a little more. Uh, for repairs, we did have to replace the roof, which was an expensive roof. It was kind of a complicated roof. Paint was expensive in this house because it was pretty big. We did some ins, uh, all the inside and then some outside touch up and repairs as well. Uh, flooring was expensive, quite a bit of carpet, and then we had to add the hardwood and refinish the hardwood as well. Bathrooms, um, we saved money on those because we used the inserts instead of tiling. Probably would have been another $500 to $1,000 each to do tile instead of the inserts. The deck was one of the most affordable things we did for what we got out of it. Looked great, awesome. Kitchen, again, we kept the cabinets, but that was the countertops and then the appliances pretty much. Those were expensive appliances. Um, we just did the stove and dishwasher. So kitchen was kind of pricey, even though we kept the cabinets. And then miscellaneous stuff, there was some electrical stuff we had to take care of, a little bit of plumbing, um, some of the drywall where the ceiling had fallen in before, um, removing popcorn, uh, just miscellaneous stuff around that number. So we had about $42,000 into the repairs. It's always more than I think it will be <laughs> every time. Uh, carrying costs, property taxes on this property, $538 is about what we paid. We had it four months. Taxes were only $1,600 a year. I love Colorado for that. Insurance, again, that's prorated. They'll give us you know a refund for the amount we don't use, but flip insurance is much more than regular insurance. Maintenance, I think we had to remove snow a couple times. That's what that is. But if it's during the summer, you know, we'd be mowing the lawn, taking care of the lawn. The costs would be a lot higher. And utilities, you know, during the winter, we're paying gas for the heating, water, electric. So not using a whole lot of water electric, but we're still using it. And those costs can add up as well. So our carrying costs are 2400 and some. And then other costs. So like I said, we had to do cash for keys, which was $2,000. I write up all that paperwork and do that myself. I have all the documents, all the stuff kind of left over from my old REO foreclosure days working with banks and kind of create our own stuff for there. Title insurance when we sold it, other closing costs when we sold it, and then the commission. So Carrie in our office who bought the property is an agent and I give my agents at Blue Steel Real Estate, my brokerage, you know, one free personal transaction per year. So basically, you know, I get a cut of each agent's commission for being the broker. But if it's their own personal house they're buying or selling, I give them one transaction where I don't get a cut. So this was one of those properties. She decided to take her whole commission, not give me any of it. So I still paid the same commission as I would have if we would have listed it on the MLS. So there wasn't an advantage there, but um, we kind of told her, hey, we do it for 350 if you want to do your normal commission split or 355 if you want all of it. So she chose that route and those are the total costs there. And then we come down to the total cost, financing, repairs, other costs, carrying costs, and we're just over $50,000 for everything. And our profit sold for three fifty five. dollars Oh, my costs. Hold on. There, fixed. <laughs> um, cost just over $50,000. Bought for two sixty seven. dollars So we made just over $37,000 on this one. So I'll take it. It was a good deal. 
if I had to do it over all over again, it's pretty risky buying from auction.com when you can't see them. I probably should have passed on this one. I really didn't think I was going to get the bid. The risk probably wasn't worth the reward because it's kind of a best case scenario with the shape the house was in, the repairs needed, what we had to do. I guess it could have been in slightly better shape. But we sold it really fast, sold it really quick, and that really helped us too. You know, if we had to hold on to this for a year, all our financing costs, you know, all of our carrying costs would be much higher and it'd be a lot tougher to to make money. So getting these done quick is a huge advantage. And this is one of the better ones we've done as far as speed. So that was nice to see. All right. So that's all I've got for this video. Thank you guys for watching. Please give us a thumbs up if you liked it. If you have any comments, leave them below. Of course, if you haven't subscribed yet, we always enjoy seeing new subscribers and you can be notified of new videos like this. And we'll have a lot more videos coming up soon as we buy more houses, get more ready to list and other advice videos. If you guys have any requests or anything, let me know. I, I might have already made the video or I can make new ones too. All right. Thanks a lot. And uh, we'll have more coming soon.